Sewer Advisory Committee meeting for December 8th, 2016 to order. The first thing is the adoption of the agenda. Do we have a motion to adopt it? I make a motion to adopt the agenda. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor of that signify by raising their right hand. <laughs> the motion is carried. <clears throat> The next thing we have is the approval of the minutes for September 8th. It's been a while since we had a meeting. Any changes? Any comment? Anybody want to make a motion? Make a motion. And do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. There we go. All right. I'm trying to move this along because I know we've got to be tonight. Um, Hurricane Matthew, Wally Hansen, why don't you tell us about that? Good evening, Madam Chairperson. <laughs> the board. Um, I, I realized we didn't have a meeting uh, for a couple of months. The, let's see, October meeting, we, we really didn't have a lot on the agenda. November, it was our full intention to bring you the capital improvement plan. Unfortunately, we had some um, problems in pulling all of it together. As you know, there's a lot of information that's involved. And also, um, we have a software that actually um, houses the capital improvement plan, and we were having problems with it as well. So um, that's the reason we canceled the November meeting. We just, quite frankly, weren't ready to bring the capital improvement plan to you. So that's on your agenda for later on this evening. But as a result, we weren't able to give you um, an update, just a, a follow-up from Hurricane Matthew. So that's why we're bringing that to you now. I know you saw um, a couple of uh, items in your last two reports that we mailed out, even though we didn't have a meeting. Uh, but I did want to share some events that did happen during the storm. Um, we shared with you in our October uh, report that uh, we talked to the state before the storm, and, you know, as it was predicted to actually uh, almost be a direct hit on Jacksonville, we were talking with the state, and they suggested that in accordance with our permit, we enter into emergency spraying. And that is built into the permit so that we can lower our lagoon levels in anticipation of an upcoming storm. Um, and it, it has some guidelines, but it's basically a named storm. Um, and that was actually the state's recommendation. So we did do that. We did that from October um, 5th or yeah, 5th through about the 13th. Um, what I'll share from that is that the net gain from emergency spring, even after we had the increased flows with the storm, is we actually gained about 22 million gallons of influent above what our um, influent was. So that was very beneficial. It actually helped us out with our lagoon levels about a half a foot when it was all said and done. Um, of course, we didn't, storage wise, we had no concerns during the storm or after the storm. Um, we did have some concerns with uh, what was coming through our headworks during um, I believe it was October 8th, we actually saw 14.1 million gallons for that 24-hour total. So while that's not the highest flow we've seen, that is a, a excessively high flow. Um, unfortunately, as a result of that, we had three reportable spills that we had to turn in. One was at Henderson Drive Pump Station. One was at the Sherwood Pump Station. And the other was on um, Pebble Court. The Henderson Drive Pump Station, um, basically what ended up happening is during the time of the storm surge, um, the, the creek actually came up and overtopped some of our manholes. So we were just draining the creek. And what ended up happening is it came out the top of the wet well at Henderson Drive. Um, as soon as the storm surge went down some, you know, the, the manholes weren't covered any longer, the station was able to keep up. So we never lost the station. It was running at full capacity. It just, it was <coughs> overwhelmed. Um, since that time, we've actually walked um, 
part of that basin. We found the area we think that was giving us problems. It's, um, I think Pete said, about a thousand feet of, of line right along the creek, the manholes. You know, if we had a, a strong storm, storm surge, the manholes look like they would submerge. So we have a project that we're working on that will raise those manholes up, put bolt down lids, watertight bolt down lids on them, and then we'll vent them up above where a storm surge would be. So hopefully we'll address that problem. Um, the Sherwood list station, though, um, it actually came out of a manhole, it wasn't right at the lift station. It was a manhole that was behind the lift station. And that one, it, the system was just overwhelmed. It's a fairly small station. It was doing all it could do and it just, it couldn't keep up. And again, we think that one is, that one's right near Cheney Creek. We think that one is also, it was flooded all around it. So we think it was largely attributable to the storm surge as well. It's not an area where we've seen um, overflows in the past and it really didn't overflow for very long. Um, the third one was Pebble Court and uh, that one was, you know, it was just bubbling up out of the manhole a little bit. Uh, we received a call, we went and investigated and downstream sewer was just, you know, the downstream sewer was just full. So there was nowhere for it to go. It's a shallow manhole. I think Pete told me it was less, uh, it was more than three feet, but less than four feet deep. So somewhere between three and four feet deep. So there just wasn't a whole lot in that man of storage in that manhole. So those are the three places that we had to submit to the state. We haven't heard anything back, um, but compared to some of our neighboring areas, that's relatively small. We're in good shape. Um, we, I think over the course of um, the storm event, we had, we recorded, depending on where you were, um, we recorded somewhere between eight inches, um, seven and eight inches out at land app um, to over 10 in the city um, but we saw around the city we saw ranging from anywhere from eight inches to over 10 inches so it's just it happened to be where the bands came through um, when we were in the uh, EOC we noticed that the city was actually very well positioned um, relative to the storm because a very large band of rains actually went north of us um, and that's what ended up going inland and really hitting them pretty hard so we were we were very lucky there so all in all we did very well during uh, Hurricane Matthew Pete did have crews that worked around the clock so our, our staff did a good job Are there any power issues we had a few, but um, we always have a few. We have some standby generators <coughs> that we shuttle around um, to uh, the smaller lift stations. All of our major lift stations have backup power. Um, and we even have a few that, you know, some of our more critical lift stations where um, response time is critical. We not only have standby generators, but we'll pre-stage um, like a bypass pump or something like that. Uh, like Ellis, we, we pre-staged a bypass pump at Ellis and it actually kicked on and helped out there. It did prevent a, a reportable spill there. That's all I have. Anybody got any questions? Okay. <clears throat> You're it. I'm it. Next grade. All right. <clears throat> Taking away from you. Well, good evening. Uh, it's good to be here with you. Uh, I'll, as you probably know, uh, the lovely and talented Deanna Treble was supposed to be making this presentation tonight. She's our Capital Projects Administrator, and she's been struggling with uh, illness for a couple days, two, three days, and finally she succumbed this morning and went home. So instead of the lovely and talented Deanna, you got the old and tired me. <laughs> so... Um, so what we're going to do tonight, you'll notice on your agenda, you, you have me down for two things. You have me down for a CIP update, and you have me down for the FY18 CIP discussion. And so what you see on this slide, the first two bullets are essentially cover the update. What we're going to do is we're going to talk, I'm going to briefly run through projects that were in the CIP that we've completed this fiscal year. 
And then I'm going to talk a little bit about projects that uh, either began this year or were carried forward into this year. In other words, they're active projects and where we are on those that have not been completed. Then we're going to move on to the FY18 discussion, as it's termed in the agenda. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the projects that you have seen, you saw in last year's CIP. They were previously supported projects. And we're going to run through those and try to talk about a little bit what has changed uh, from last year's CIP to this year's CIP. And, um, and what you need to realize about that is that it is uh, as staff currently sees it right now. Of course, we have to go through the, uh, the process. And that process, of course, involves, uh, you know, looking at the money, uh, other meetings with the city manager's office, then, you know, back uh, for your support. And so, you know, what we talk about tonight about those projects could shift a little bit, move around. So it's, it's you know, it's a little dynamic. But what you're not going to see tonight are the new projects that uh, we are proposing for FY18, the ones you've not seen before. What we are planning to do that is bring those back to you in January so we can have a discussion about new projects. And what I would say also, though, is there's 51 slides here tonight. What uh, I might suggest, if you're willing, is if you have any real detailed questions about the projects that we're going to run through tonight, uh, what I would suggest is maybe we get those questions and bring it back to you in January where we don't have 51 slides that we're going through. It's up to y'all. But anyway. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just quickly run through what the CIP schedule looks like. So with that said, Projects that we've completed this year, they include those that you see there. The inflow and infiltration project, that was basically two projects, two contracts, where we, uh, we repaired uh, sewers by actually replacing segments of sewers and another contract where we lined sewers that didn't have structural problems, but we found had issues. These projects came to us th uh, th uh, through two processes. One is through reports uh, by Pete's staff in their everyday work. And the other uh, way that they came to us, the ones that we attacked, was through our street uh, program. Whenever we get ready to rehabilitate a street, repave a street, before we do that, we go out and we look at the infrastructure, uh, television it, look at repair records, and then um, you know, uh, develop uh, what needs to be done and try to do that before we go pave the street because nobody likes the street that's been paved to be cut almost immediately after it's been paved. The other one is, I think you know a little bit about, the Blue Frog Aeration Units. They're in the uh, second train uh, at LTS um, and uh, in operating, and we're in a monitoring phase. Um, Early indications are that uh, it is doing well. Uh, there tends to be evidence that the sludge is being reduced. But uh, again, this is a pilot program, and we'll be monitoring that and reporting to the state. Linwood, Wilson, and Sioux Court, that uh, project where we replaced uh, in each one of those old galvanized two-inch lines, which tend to be problematic. And Wilson and Sioux, we replaced two with two, but on Linwood, we actually upsized the two to six. And then lastly, the Bell Fork uh, Road sewer upgrade uh, was completed, and that is uh, where we, underneath uh, Bell Fork in front of Etheridge Furniture, there was an 8-inch line that had an 18-inch line upstream of it discharging in, into it, and it had a 24-inch line down below it that it was discharging into. So there was a bottleneck there. So we replaced that line uh, underneath uh, uh, Bell Fork Road. With what size? Uh, I think it. I think it was a 24. I think so. Thank you. Um, now there are a few projects that we, um, I guess you would say, move to the on hold uh, category. The first one being the solid steel watering bed. That was uh, basically a uh, what we envisioned was a. Uh, 
a sloped concrete slab that allowed um, um, grease that we get out of our, our wet wells and other solids to uh, drain off and uh, so that uh, you can take uh, the less wet grease and solids and go dispose of them. We have a solids dewatering bed already um, and it had issues and Pete uh, took it upon himself to make some modifications there and what he's telling us is that uh, right now he's good with that and that we don't uh, need to go forward with that project, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll uh, keep watching it. Um, the emergency interconnection with uh, uh, Camp uh, Lejeune, uh, that is a water connection that was is supposed to occur uh, at the, what is now closed, Tawara Terrace uh, uh, entrance, uh, to the base uh, where we were going to connect our water system. So should we have an outage uh, anywhere in the vicinity, uh, we could open a valve and share water. Uh, we're waiting on the base. The base is uh, responsible for doing the design. Uh, we just fund our portion of the project. And uh, I think they're sort of tied up in their red tape and have been for a couple of years. Uh, the next one is the uh, Half Moon Creek Water and Sewer Project. That was a water and sewer extension project that uh, we sort of put a, uh, um, I guess, a schematic together of, and it was intended to, or intended to serve um, upwards Ramsey Road uh, area um, to the west of, just west and adjacent to the Carolina Forest subdivision. Uh, we put that on the boards because we had a couple, some developers that came to us that were indicating that they wanted to develop in that area. So we basically just sort of lined out what we thought it would look like and uh, put some numbers to it, but there's been no movement in that area, so we don't intend to do any design work on that at this time. It's developer-driven. Likewise, U.S. 17 uh, North Drummer Kellum Water Sewer Extension is another developer-driven project um, that we expect will, the developer project, it's a commercial subdivision that's right near uh, Drummer Kellum Road on U.S. 17, that we uh, expect them to go forward with um, possibly next year. It is designed, it's ready to go, but we're not going to go forward with it until we know that something's going to come of it. And one of the reasons for that is we have set up a special assessment area for that. Um, and what that means is we're going to recapture the cost of designing and constructing that infrastructure as people, you know, connect to, to that infrastructure. So, you know, not only will they, you know, pay their regular rates, but they'll pay a prorated share of the cost of constructing and designing that infrastructure. So, you know, we're waiting for the first one to actually do something before we put that in place so we can, you know, have revenue on that. And then the other one, Marine Boulevard water line at Cheney Creek, I, I don't know that to, on hold, I would just say that's more, we've slid that project and we've slid that project for two reasons. Um, and as I look at that, um, that graphic, um, the labeling is not exactly right. Uh, the, the, uh, the blue line uh, that uh, it's, it's pointing to, the one that's closer to the top, that's actually the existing water line. There's an existing water line there that uh, it appear, it appears to be uh, reaching the end of its service life. It's a water line that's on piles. And our first take on this project when we were in the, you know, planning stages was that we would directional drill a water line under the creek, right where you see that other blue line. And it has turned out to be much more complicated than that. You would not believe how many utilities exist in that area underneath the creek between the road and that railroad track. So we're, we've slowed down a bit on that. We are in conversation with NCDOT about some other options. And that's one of the reasons that we've, we've slowed down. So we've pushed that one out, um, uh, I think, to next year. And 
the other reason we pushed it out the next year is that we have uh, at least one project um, that we'll talk about a little bit later. It's called the Step Screen that we're uh, anticipating to go over the budget that we had set for it in the CIP. Uh, and so what we are going to do is um, redirect the money from this one that's slated for this one for this year to that project. And we'll talk about the step screen in a moment. Now, can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. What possible problems are there with delaying that? What possible problems? Yeah. Is well, there problems it's, with the pilings or anything? The pilings are, are the weak point in the link. Mm -hmm. uh, we think we've got it shored up sufficiently that we've got some time, but we don't want to, it to be there forever. <coughs> so now we'll move on to the projects that we're actually engaged in this fiscal year. And what you see there right now when it comes to water, sewer, individual water, individual sewer projects, and the combined projects where uh, the project involves both is, you know, the numbers that you see there. And the first one on that list that we'll talk about is on page six of the CIP booklet. It's not on your map that you have, your colored map. And this was what Wally was talking about earlier. We were actually already engaged in that project when Hurricane Matthew came along. Um, we, uh, our first, what we were doing was we were concentrating on the large trunk line that runs from basically Western Boulevard down to the Henderson pump station. Uh, we had already walked that line and we had already identified roughly 40 manholes that are sitting essentially flush with grade in what we would term as a floodplain. So whenever the water goes up, they're submerged. Now we'd like to think that they're you know all watertight, but the likelihood of that is not very good. So what we're getting ready to do now is we're getting ready to request bids to uh, clear clear the easement in which this line is located. We're expecting those bids, uh, or it's going out for bid uh, next week, the clearing part. Once it's cleared, what we're going to do is a project to raise those manholes. Then after, and we expect that project to go out in spring of 2017. And then once the manholes are raised, what we're going to do is we're going to camera the lines. Um, and when we find, you know, depending upon what we find, we likely will have a project in fiscal year 18 to line sewers, maybe actually replace some sewers here and there. We don't know until we camera. So uh, this for us is a very important project. And uh, there is no change in cost or schedule from last year's CIP in this year's CIP as we've currently got it. The next one is one we've been talking about for a, a long while. It's, uh, we, we've referred to it in the past as the Parkwood Regional Pump Station and Force Main and Western Trunk Sewer. And most recently we've called it the Western Regional Sewer Project because it's near Western Boulevard and it's on the western side of the city. And you will recall this project uh, essentially involves uh, uh, running sewer from Carolina Forest Boulevard to a new regional large pump station on the backside of Williamsburg Plantation. And what we'll do is initially we'll redirect the sewer from Carolina Forest Boulevard into uh, this uh, new system, uh, which will help take some pressure off of the Henderson Basin uh, and help with the overflows. And um, you know, the project involves uh, uh, what you see there in, uh, is a, uh, a long force main. I think I can do that. The pump station and then what I'll call the sewer. And this is the Carolina Forest pump station that will go this way. Well, where we are on this project right now is we're actually um, projecting to go out well, let me tell you this. What we're going to do is we're going to divide this into several contracts. 
The force main is going to be divided into two contracts, one on, uh, actually it's at the river, I'm not exactly right, but the force main on the west side of, um, of um, the New River out to the LTS. I really messed you up, sorry. <laughs> the force main uh, out to the LTS from New River is one contract. The force main from the New River back to the pump station is another contract. The pump station's a contract, the truck sewer's a contract, and the redirection of Carolina Forest is a Boulevard pump station is a contract. And we're expecting the first contract to be out for bids this March. We expect the second contract to follow 30 days after that, and then we're going to go on from there. And the reason we're, we're staggering it is because we have to have certain parts of, of the... Um, project in place before we can start the next part. And so it's going to be a phased project. It's going to last about two years. Um, so you know, what I will tell you is uh, the, um, the estimate has increased from uh, last year. It's up uh, because now we've actually worked on the details of this project, and there are quite a lot of details. And so we've got a more refined uh, budget established for it now. And, and that's reflected in the CIP. But you also say that you're transferring funds from the water sewer fund of 50000 Where does that come from? The water mm -hmm. sewer fund. That's the big letters you got in bold give me letters. Your, give me your... Page 9? It's on page 9. Mm -hmm. I just... Mm -hmm. Transferring the money in part was totally what I was wondering. <clears throat> They taken it out of their budget, or that was my guess is I mean that was done through an ordinance amendment, a budget ordinance amendment in 2012. So mm. I'm sure that that's something that we that did was, as yeah. a result of either the EA or the the environmental assessment yes. or the design. Mm. Really, that's yeah. probably old information at this point yeah. that we could take out, so it's not confusing. Okay. Yeah. Because that was from 2012. That probably was money that we used to fund the EA, the environmental assessment. Okay, thank you. And so it's a 4.5 million gallon sewer day pump station. So is that how much it's going to, how much do you think it'll start out pumping? Um, I don't know. It's probably going to be less than, than a million initially. And that's it. Because Hendricks, I mean, um, well, it takes part of Brookview too. Yeah, it does take part of Brookview. So you might be at a million. It's, I you think that. it's probably, it might be close. I think it might be a little less than that. So what it'll do is it'll, uh, uh, Williamsburg Plantation, along Williamsburg Plantation subdivision, there's a branch that's got a trunk sewer, will intercept a portion of that trunk sewer which actually goes to Brookview Pump Station. And then we'll also intercept Carolina Forest Pump Station. Mm -hmm. So essentially everything north of Western Boulevard all the way down to Carolina Forest, we will capture. Yeah, it'll take... So yeah, all of the low food, all of um, a portion of Williamsburg Plantation, um, all of Carolina Forest... And then, um, as we've talked about in the future, that sets us up to more effectively serve um, the vineyards or um, Cypress Creek. I don't know what name it is now, but um, the 380-some acres that are currently annexed. And I'll also pick up um, all of the development around the intersection of um, Gum Branch and Western. Western. Yes, yes, it'll pick up all that new development in that area. So that'll go in immediately mm -hmm. once it's constructed. And we're doing about four million plus a day in totality, is that right? Or no? You said it was up to 15 million or something one day at, at the station. So you're taking off, that's what I'm trying to get at. How much, oh, how how much are we taking off? Uh, I'm, I'm yes. Greg says a little bit less than a million gallons mm -hmm. a day. That's certain something we, we can come back okay. next time. Um, and then eventually, go ahead. When you said that it's taking everything north of Western, is it going to include the commercial stuff on Western, or is that 
not going to be included in this? No, it uh, mm -hmm. anything on the south side of Western, uh, it will not. But it, the the commercial on the north side, it will. Everything uh, on the Carolina Forest side, it will take Carolina in. Carolina Forest back towards Gum Branch, yes. Okay. And then all of that right at the intersection, basically from at the intersection would be from uh, where Western Parkway, sorry, not Western Parkway, uh, Williamsburg Parkway comes around and intersects Western Yeah. Um, near uh, Kitchen Lighting and Design, that mm -hmm. area up to Western, you know, the Food Lion Shopping Center, um, the Lowe's Food Shopping Center, um, all of that area would go, would be redirected into this also. Okay. Wally, is, is the thought still to interconnect it with the pump station at Cheney Creek? In the long term, that's that is not part of this project, but the long term is to be able to do that. But that's a much larger project. Um, so the, the problem will still exist if something happens at the Cheney site, how to get it out to the lift station? It will. Because this is that was supposed to be this was supposed to be the backup, wasn't it? That you were going to make it kind of um, be able to take it. Yes. That is one of the advantages in the future. This is actually designed so that we can take. It, it's kind of like an interstate. You're taking a portion of what would go through there and redirecting it around the system, um, and eventually through further. Uh, um, it's actually in the CIP in later years, mm -hmm. and it's shown in the, the little green down here. We'll extend it further down Western Boulevard, and at some point it will be everything north of Western, down to 17, and out 17. But in terms of interconnection, mm -hmm. it, it is on our radar. It's just not in the five-year window. That's yes. one of the th long-term things that we want to do. It's have an interconnection between the two stations, mm -hmm. and these station, this station will be sized to 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 carry what we will call the dry weather flow mm -hmm. for all of the city. Mm -hmm. So when it's not raining, it's not wet. This will be able to you know take its load and also the main pump station's load and you know send it on to the treatment plant. So it, that's just sort of outside the five-year window, but it's something that we really want to do. Okay. I think the question comes up because the board in the past has expressed a concern that we have one funnel going out to land app, and if something should happen, we don't want to have to, as board members, go out to everybody's home and bail out their toilets for them. So yeah. uh, I, the understand. question is reasonable, and I think maybe we may want in the board's future to talk about how soon that interconnectivity should be made because we take a significant risk, do we not? with having a single way across the river for the city on either side, I mean, either north or just the main system. Mm -hmm. So that's a, I <laughs> would suggest that may be a point of discussion in the future, Chairman, uh, in regard to when that connectivity can be looked to, because I think we have an environmental risk, if not a customer risk, until it's... Is the... I guess I should ask. Is it? It's right now. It's the money. That's an enormous thing, isn't it? I think. The, I think the whole council needs to talk about it a little bit more too. Because mm -hmm. I think we're divided on. Some people yeah. might want it, and some people <clears throat> might think you know you're buying insurance for something that's never happened. Maybe there's an alternative mm -hmm. that you could have an, another preparedness yeah, scenario well, that you know it's. Uh, but we've never had a suggestion what that other thing could be to mitigate the risk that the board sees in having right but i'm just saying you're talking about something that's expensive never happened though you're talking about you know what are we talking about immediate or no, something no. You know, a, we're talking about the age of the, the age of the system no um, anyway we'll, we'll yeah. do that someday uh, for what it's worth um the age of the system is not what concerns me it's the people that are out there drilling holes in the ground and running conduits and pipes that um may not always pull the permits or get the permits that they need or we not may not be aware of it because it's outside of our area. Those are the ones that concern me. Our our crews are doing a good job of doing every they can everything they can to maintain the system, clean out the air release valves, you know, those kind of things. What what concerns me is the um 
somebody finding it accidentally. Yes. And putting a great big hole in it. Yes. Yes, that is what concerns me. Mm -hmm. And we have we have actually had some um, situations that could have been a whole lot worse than there were. I, I personally drove out one day, and somebody was set up on top of it, getting ready to directional drill. Mm -hmm. And the person I had a very lengthy conversation of why he wasn't going to drill where he was. So, and they ended up moving. They just they didn't realize. So those are the things that concern me. How is it labeled, the path, or is it not? It is not. It but is. there, there is evidence on most roads. I mean, you can, if you know what you're looking for, you can. <laughs> have, but um, you yeah. know, there's air release valves and uh, manholes that are exposed and pretty large clear areas. It's and buried. It's, it's buried deeper than our typical force yes. mains, but still, you know, that's and it is ductile. Yeah, it's ductile iron. Do you ever worry about how exposed parts of that is at the main pump station? Um, utilities maintenance monitors it. You're talking about right at the station where you well, can kind of see it. Well, when you cross that, you know, that nice walkway that was mm -hmm. built and all, I mean, you've got all those pipes. They're right there. They are? Mm-hmm. And I've seen other places where they do stuff like they put chain link over around it, build a cage or something like that. And I know there was that problem at the Henderson station where it got damaged. The one by the, the one you were talking about, Little Creek, remember? Somebody got in there and damaged it, and then they put the fence around it. It was a while back ago. I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Okay. I don't doubt that that happened. All right. I'm drawing a blank. I just wonder, because that is, it's pretty exposed there. It is. If I may go back to a point that was asked about when we were saying the new I system would alleviate a million gallons per day. The one over there by the That's just a portion of right what that will end up doing considering any new development will also therefore not go that other direction will come this way. <coughs> That's so correct. Having a four million or four and a half million capacity and taking a million off the, from the old system it leaves us three and a half million for the new development which then won't have to go through the other system. That's correct. And it gives us the opportunity to extend it down toward 17 and take additional pressure off our existing system. All right. Exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, another project, uh, it's uh, on page 12 of your CIP handout. It's number four on the, uh, the um, map is Holiday City Mobile Home Park lift station. This project, as originally envisioned, um, was a project to <coughs> replace the wet well at a pump station that you see in, uh, circled in blue there, immediately downstream of that mobile home park. Uh, and that replaced the wet well, new pumps, new pipes, but use uh, the new controls that we put out there in uh, recent history. And the thought there was that uh, we needed a larger wet well because when it rains, it uh, it's Katie bar the door there. That pump station goes into alarm and it, we have a high, high level. But what we did was, instead of immediately going to that design, we, we wanted to know, well, how much is it and are there other options? And so what we did was we have just completed some uh, flow monitoring of the, that mobile home park. And what we're, we're not quite finished uh, analyzing the data and, and formulating recommendations resulting from it, but what I will tell you is that during Hurricane Matthew, the peak factor and that is, the peak factor there was 21. That means that, let's say on a, an average day, you have uh, 10,000 gallons uh, per minute. Well, during that rain, it was 21 times that, than what it typically sees out there. So... What we are right now uh, working through is, are, do we need to um, work on this lift station or do we need to look at other options for this private sewer collection system? 
And so that's where we are right now. What uh, we could end up saying is, yes, uh, we should just live with the, the rainfall, excessive uh, flow uh, when it rains. No, we shouldn't do that. We should uh, have corrections uh, made to the collection system there or have it replaced or a combination of both where we make some corrections and we end up with a pump station project that's smaller. So as a result of that, we've shifted this project about a year because we've spent the past several months doing uh, flow monitoring out there. Um, we had construction in this fiscal year, and so where we've put it now is around FY18. Um, the U.S. 17 North Water and Sewer Extension. This um, is a, a project whose aim is to, um, I guess, provide the water and sewer backbone necessary to support um, development if and when it comes up U.S. 17 from Piney Green northward. Where we are right now on this project is uh, we've been doing some master planning and we've been working with a consultant. The consultant, uh, I've been reviewing his work and we've been working through this together and we expect that the uh, master plan will be done uh, in the first quarter of calendar year 17. Right now we don't have a change in cost or schedule, but you know we don't have any design slated for a few years because you know we want to only go forward with this if and when it looks like we're under development pressure and again also set up a special assessment area where development pays for any infrastructure that we put out there. I suspect when we get that master plan and uh, finalized that we'll be back to you to share its findings and recommendations with you. Henderson Drive Infrastructure. This is a project that's being driven by an NCDOT or NCDOT's plans to repave Henderson Drive from US 17 uh, to the pedestrian crossing at Jacksonville High School. Uh, we have water and sewer underneath that street and you know quite naturally they want us to make sure that it is uh, good uh, and will last a while, so like I said earlier, when it's paved, we don't have to go back and cut holes to make repairs. And so we have been actively working on this project. We have, um, have uh, televisioned all the sewers out there and have uh, put together our recommendations for that, and that will translate into plans for those sewers. I think most of it is, uh, involves lining for some minor structural issues. We've also done some modeling of the water system out there because we looked at this, is this an opportunity to combine some water lines? Because there's, the water lines are in segments on that, on that uh, street. And that modeling basically said um, in a couple of places it would be good to join them, but to join the whole thing, to cross underneath Mill Creek with a, a line that's not, where there's not one there now, at, you know, quite a bit of expense, really doesn't do anything for you. So um, right now we're uh, expecting, uh, given where we're at, construction to get underway on these uh, fixes and replacements towards the end of fiscal uh, this uh, fiscal year. Uh, your, your CIP shows a slight uh, decrease in estimated cost and, uh, you know, the project's on schedule. Uh, Southwest Blue Creek School Road Water. Can I interrupt you for just sure. a second? When you start one, would you tell us what page it's on? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do that. That way we don't have to be flipping through and okay. miss what you're yeah. saying. I think that one was Thank incorrect you. anyway. Yeah. The next one is on uh, Southwest Blue Creek School Road Water. It's page 26. Thank you. And it's number 11 on your, on your map. Uh, mm -hmm. 
this project started out as a project to extend a 12-inch water line from where it ends on 17 near the North Carolina Department of Transportation District Office and Maintenance Office down 17 and then take a right-hand turn and go down Blue Creek School Road. The project came about because of some uh, inquiries by a developer uh, who was planning for some large tracks out there, some light commercial industrial type uh, development. Uh, when the project was put in the CIP, I had done some very quick calculations and uh, determined that we could probably do that without making any other you know, major uh, improvements such as a water tank or a booster pump station, but you know, I wanted to actually get into the model and do it. And when we started that process though, what happened was there was uh, some um, concerns about water pressure over uh, on Yop Road uh, right at its intersection with um, um, 24 near Burke's Outlet and those different places. So the project turned into a larger modeling project. And where we are right now is um, we are finishing up that uh, modeling and we are expecting to have our, uh, I guess, results and recommendations around February. What it, it's initially indicating, I think, is that um, it all comes down to management of the system. Uh, on that side of the river to ensure that we have uh, proper uh, flow and pressure. We just have to keep after the downtown tank. And uh, so, again, we'll have results, I think, around February, and then we'll go, go from there. Uh, right now, we do still show the, the Blue Creek project as uh, an extension project. Uh, that, uh, there's a slight increase in the cost of that project. And uh, the uh, construction has been moved from FY17 to FY19. Uh, at, in FY19, because it doesn't look like right now that uh, that industrial development, like commercial area project, is on the immediate horizon. Indian Drive Booster Pump Station. This is another one. It's on uh, page 30. It's number 20 on your map. And the uh, Indian Drive Booster Pump Station is the uh, one station, and only station, that conveys water from uh, between the pressure zones, from the, from the, uh, between the low and high pressure zones. And that station was constructed in 1962. So uh, it is uh, pretty much at the end of its service life. So this project is a project to uh, um, replace things that need to re replacing and to upgrade some things. Uh, what it is going to involve is uh, in installation of variable frequency drives some electrical upgrades, uh, providing uh, heating, uh, uh, air conditioning of the building, uh, a generator, and some associated site work. It might also involve um, uh, working on the roof. Uh, the roof might need replacing, or uh, one of the things that we're thinking is we might need to redo the roof so that we can more easily remove the pumps from the building should they need maintenance, lift them with a crane through the top. So um, we have a, a consulting firm on board who has begun the design. Um, and uh, as he's gotten into the design, uh, we've gotten some preliminary uh, uh, budget numbers from him. And this CIP reflects a cost increase, of the, increase in the project based upon actually getting into the details of it. So the, the numbers are up a little bit in, the, uh, in this year's CIP. Automated screen at the LTS. Um, this is the uh, this is uh, a project where at the LTS, when the wastewater comes into the plant, it goes through screens. These screens basically take out the trash, the solids, so that that it's are in your book. that are inert. Yeah, it's not in the book. Sorry, uh, that are inert uh, that you know can't be treated through the process. 
we have uh, one screen out there that hasn't functioned in a number of years. And so right now we have two channels, but really only one channel that is usable because the other screen is uh, out of commission. Uh, so this project intends to replace that screen. Uh, right now, we are going to be receiving bids on this project uh, next week, as a matter of fact. And you will recall that I, I mentioned that um, we were delaying one project, the project at uh, the Waterline Crossing 17, because of a project that we expected to basically uh, overrun its budget. This is it. Uh, as we have gotten into this project, uh, it is, uh, we have found a, a, a little more than what we thought we were going to be dealing with out there uh, uh, when it comes to this project. Um, this project is going to require replacement of some conveyors. It's going to require uh, some uh, correction of some SCADA issues so we can monitor the screen. And it's also going to require us to add an additional conveyor that's not there now because of the Western Regional Project uh, that's going to have yet, you know, a, a second force main coming to the LTS. So all those things have contributed to a uh, uh, the project going up uh, in price. So, but we will see if that is really true when we receive bids on Thursday. We also make some heat improvements to existing. Yes. Yeah, the, the, one of the problems they have out there is uh, these screens uh, freeze in cold weather. And so not only are we going to uh, provide heat for this unit, but uh, heat for the, for the other existing step screen. The other step screen also has, and again, this all goes back to, you know, why the project has gone up in cost. Its controls are um, uh, not working uh, properly, so we're going to replace the controls for the other screen. So, you know, again, all this has helped to escalate the price of this, this project. One thing I'd like to share is because we don't have any um, heat source out there, when we get, you know, forecasts in the 20s, we have to man it all night long. So we actually put people out there and we use de-icer and they keep it clean so that it won't freeze. We've tried several things like uh, putting a tent over it and heating the tent. That works some. Um, but if it looks like it's going to be a very cold night, we typically like put personal out there. <laughs> so they'll be happy, weekend. very happy to see this happen. <laughs> and another thing we're doing, I mean, we're in the weeds here, but... Um, we're actually, you know, the new controls for the step screen, the existing step screen, and the controls for the, the new one are going to have a timer in it so that, you know, what happens is when it gets, uh, gets the trash uh, on it, the water level starts rising. And this thing, as Deanna terms, it's like an escalator. So it grabs the trash and it moves it up. And then the water level goes down. And the next time the water level rises because stuff is blocking it, it, you know, it, it advances again, the water level falls. Well, you know, sometimes it takes a long time for that to happen. <laughs> One of the things that we're going to do as another feature is provide a timer that, you know, after so many minutes or whatever, it has an advance, go ahead and advance so you don't freeze. So that's another feature. Um, and that wasn't in your book because... When you print the CIP, you give it a date range, and that one will be complete this year. Well, so that's why it didn't show up. It's going to be completed in the first quarter of FY18. We're expecting it to be completed around August. So usually, if it's completed in the first quarter of the next fiscal year, we don't put it in the yeah, board. it doesn't roll over. Uh, next one is also not in the book. Uh, it's uh, called water tank isolation valves and it's for Northwoods and Ellis tanks. And what we need there are isol valves to isolate the tanks so that we can completely drain them so we can do inspection and maintenance. Right now, if we want to do that, we have to basically take the area around it out of service. People are without water if we want to take those 
tanks offline and drain them. So we're going to add valves so that people still get water, but we can drain the tanks. Right now, design is underway and construction is scheduled to begin around about uh, April. Wow. So this is moving into this is moving into the FY18 uh, CIP. And again, these are projects that you have seen before that uh, have been carried through to the uh, into this year's CIP. And um, what we'll do is again briefly remind you what they are and talk about. Uh, uh, what we are proposing to do in terms of uh, schedule and if we think there's been any cost increase. And what you're going to, we're going to run through are six water projects, nine sewer projects, and six combined projects where the project involves both water and sewer. The first one on the list is uh, Old Bridge Street Infrastructure. It's on uh, page three. And it's number 12 on your map. And this is a project, a water and sewer project, being driven by a, a future project uh, to uh, provide streetscape improvements, wider sidewalks, improved lighting, median planners, and putting utilities below ground. And it's on old bridges you'll see there. Uh, between uh, East Railroad Street up to the bridge over New River. And um, the thing I want to point out about the cost you see there is that cost includes both, that you see in your book, includes both the uh, streetscape uh, improvements as well as the uh, water and sewer uh, utility work. And right now, because this project is so far out, what we've done is we've just sort of assumed that we're going to do complete replacements of water and sewer there. That's probably not going to happen. But, you know, the project right now is scheduled for 2021, so we've really not delved into it real, real hard to know really what is that water and sewer cost really going to be. Um, right now, we're estimating if we replaced everything, the water and sewer component of that would be about $400,000 why the non-water and sewer work would be about 900000 with the great percentage of that non-water and sewer work being burying the utilities at a roughly about $760,000, burying the, the, the power, the cable, the telephone that run down that street. And Isn't it, this the same area that they're talking about putting the little roundabout? Yep. Yeah. That was in the paper earlier this week? We no, I thought it was on. We changed our mind. Did you? On that particular location. Thank you. Because it, 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 it gave three different <laughs> scenarios on there. Pardon? It, it, it had given three different scenarios in there in the paper, and I was trying to remember what the three were. The you need to watch the last, most recent workshop. The big part is that there just wasn't, it didn't seem to be room there to do it. Right. That was the big problem. Yeah. Okay, just wondering. Okay. Because I know you try and do stuff so you don't have to dig up stuff yeah. again. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> hey, I pay those taxes. I want my money's worth, by God. <laughs> well, here's another one. Okay. Uh, same scenario. Um, Court Street. Uh, it's on page four, and it's number 13 on your map. And it's, uh, um, it is another project where we're, you know, uh, the water and sewer parts being driven by a potential um, a streetscape project. Uh, the water and sewer component, again, right now, we're of uh, that overall number you see there in your book, uh, we're estimating at like, I think, $814,000. Again, that just assumes complete replacement of every w water and sewer line that's down there and reconnection of services. Uh, again, as this gets closer, and if it gets closer, uh, we'll do a better job of trying to decide what does need to be replaced, what can be fixed, lined, whatever, and have a better number. Another one. Uh, this is a new bridge, uh, again, driven by a streetscape project. 
It is between uh, Johnson and Warlick. This is on page five of your CIP and number eight on your map. Um, this, uh, this project, uh, the number which I didn't jot down, uh, does not uh, include uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, burying the utilities, the number that is given. Um, it was in last year's CIP, and what we've done is we have looked at this one a little closer. We're still not quite in the weeds, but um, what we, we think is that we're going to be able to line a fair amount of the sewer instead of replacing it. So that's why the number is down from last year, and it's also down because we're using uh, more recent bid prices uh, to help us with our estimates. And this is what we have had significant water problems on. Yes. I mean, we've, we've repaired multiple leaks along Newbridge Street. So this is what we know that will need to be done. I think, I think Newbridge Street has been in the CIP since 2008 or 9. So it's one that we know will have to be done soon. Um, we do uh, typically have um, uh, an infiltration and inflow project uh, in our CIP in one year. What we do is, in this particular case, in uh, FY19, what we will do is um, identify um, um, and design our project and then um, plan for construction in 2020. And again, it's part of our ongoing uh, effort to reduce inflow and infiltration in our um, system. This one is on page seven of your book and it's uh, inflow and infiltration FY19 and 20. So this is an FY19 project and I think that's where it was last year also. I think in the, maybe it was two capital improvement plan ago, mm -hmm. we went from having one large project every five years to smaller projects, breaking those up and doing them every other year um, or every third year. So this is a continuity. This project should be in your capital improvement plan every year we review it because this is an ongoing program. Quick question on the construction that yes. you're having like 585 I believe it says is that part of what you say up here if you find things you make the repairs is that part of where that money's coming or is that additional no that's uh now if you're talking about if we find them and right. and utility maintenance piece screws go right. in that's additional money that's separate from this this is we we basically are as part of that program we're setting aside seven hundred thousand dollars every two to three years to go in and do capital improvement work where we find larger problems like the 40 manholes that Greg discussed earlier. So this is for larger projects, not, you know, oh, we found a storm drain tied in or we found um, broken clean outs in a neighborhood when we went through and smoke tested or something like that. Is this projects that are going to be contracted out? Yes. Is that the difference uh, uh, where the money this money is for contracted out projects. Okay. Pete's projects are more small things that he finds on right. a day to day yes. basis. Right. If it's something that he can live with, mm -hmm. uh, what he'll typically do is we'll keep a list of those it, things yes. and it, it makes, you know, we put them all together and we have a larger project. Okay. Now, if it's something major like um, he's, a, I guess it was at the beginning, it was over the summer sometime, he found a pipe under. Um, well, that Cheney, what's the small creek, the Thompson School Creek, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the pipe under the creek had failed, so it was causing backups, plus the creek was getting in. So that's one, it was contracted out, but it was done as part of his maintenance and repair budget, mm -hmm. but it was an I&I &I effort also. So but 
sometimes we do have things that blend multiple yeah, that, that was um, more sources. Of a, more of an emergency because yes. I mean, yeah, that water's would pouring be some in kind of failure like that. Yeah. yeah. So, but if it's you know, if it's now, if we found a storm drain that was tied in that was ten feet deep or twelve feet deep above what our crew could do. Um, and it's a storm drain that, you know, we don't have the overloads in the system all the time. That's one we would identify, but we wouldn't, you know, Pete probably wouldn't do it as an emergency through his budget. He would save his budget to do something more pressing, but that's something that we would list here and pick up. Okay. So for this one, unlike the other one, the other one you said it's going to be a, a, a lot of those Henderson ones that you were talking about. This one hasn't gotten a, a predetermined area yet. You're going to wait to see what pops up. That's correct. Okay. See what our, our flow monitoring, our smoke testing, our SCADA monitoring, the, all of that goes into it. Street, you know, Streets projects. Streets projects. All of that goes into it. Um, and one of, the, one of our newer approaches you've seen... Um, I think if you recall the Park Lane and Stratford project that was well over a million dollars when we initially slated that project, we went through, did all the evaluation. What we found was most of the sewer problems in that area were really I and I project problems. Um, so what we did is we reduced that project. Instead of replacing all the sewer, we came in and made I and I repairs, you know, we, we replaced a few places. We went in, dug it, you know, isolated areas and replaced a short segment and then we lined it. Mm -hmm. So it significantly reduced the crop, the cost of a replacement project, but it met the requirements for our I and I project. So sometimes we do get benefits there. Another project that you've seen before is called the Decatur Lift Station Elimination Project. This is on page 10. Thank you. And it's uh, number 15 on the map. And what we believe here is we have the opportunity to uh, eliminate a older lift station, uh, the Decatur Lift Station, uh, and um, in favor of uh, extending the gravity sewer to tie into an existing gravity sewer, thereby eliminating, you know, the ongoing uh, O&M cost, uh, power consumption costs, so on and so forth, of a, uh, a pump station. And what uh, we envision uh, it will take to do that is to install about 1,700 linear feet of 15-inch uh, sanitary sewer. And uh, right now, that design is slated for FY18 and construction in 19. Uh, if, you know, we, when we actually get in the weeds of this, we determine what we thought we could do, we can't do for whatever reason, that is just get rid of the station, then we'll probably end up with a project to uh, upgrade this station because it is old. How old is it? You know, I don't know. I just know it's been there a while. <laughs> it's one that it's actually, that's one of the ones that we pre-stage a um, bypass pump mm -hmm. because the, the pumps are suction lift. So if you lose prime, you have to get them reprimed. So that takes time. It's a smaller wet well. And on top of that, right along where that blue creek, that blue line runs is a creek, a stream. So if something happens at that station, knock on wood, it hasn't yet. But if something happens at that station, it will get in the creek, so it's automatically a reportable spill. So those are all factors that are going into this. Uh, obviously, we would love to be able to eliminate the station, but of course, with elevation and construction challenges, we, we need a lot more information to know if we'll be able to do that. And if I had to guess, I would guess that's been there since the, at least the 70s. Early 70s, I think. That one is? Okay. Hmm. You can see it um, from Decatur, kind of sits back off the road, not not real far, probably yeah. 50 feet, 60 feet maybe. It's a this small isn't little. the one that we went to in that rainstorm that it basically the thing was just flooded? No, that was okay. a different one. All right. Western Trunk Shore Phase 2, uh, it's not on the map. Uh, it's page 11 of your CIP handout. And this is essentially the next phase of that larger western uh, regional sewer project. This 
puts us further down um, Western Boulevard um, and what uh, we end up doing is uh, setting a lift station right near uh, Gateway North. Uh, we're still, right now where we are on this project is we're sort of in a uh, planning phase. We're trying to decide on the site for that pump station. Uh, we've not really done any design, but because of development pressure over right adjacent to Gateway North, we're trying to make sure that we carve out a, a place for a pump station. Uh, you know, this just basically gets us further down uh, Western Boulevard, allows us to pick up more sewer that would flow from the north of Western Boulevard and direct it into that trunk sewer. Uh, we have shifted the timeline on this because uh, our uh, phase one project uh, is uh, the construction of that's not slated to be over until I think the first quarter of FY20. So for this one right now, we have the design in FY19 and construction beginning uh, in uh, FY20. We adjusted our cost estimate from last year just a little bit. Uh, I think it's right around $20,000, uh, but um, uh, not much has changed other than that. This isn't the project that's number two on the map? Uh, it says not on map. My thing is it number two. It's really close to number two. It's no, cool. it would be further down. Um, so if you if you look at number two uh -huh. and you move down Western Boulevard uh -huh. to um, the first uh, diagonal across from number six, uh, the first road into the Commons, that's where that would sit. And by putting placing the station there, we would actually pick up. Um, a large portion of the commons development. Um, a lot of it comes out um, along the creek toward Western Boulevard, and then a portion of it actually goes out the bottom side and comes down 17. So this will pick up a portion of the commons. Where you're talking about wanting to make sure you have room for it. When you drive in that part of the commons, I'm that budget. whole side on the left, mm -hmm where like the emergency response center is and parks and recs headquarters and all of that does the city own all of that track i may need you to describe that to me one more time i, I missed the boundaries if you come off to the end of the bypass and you're looking at yep. the jacksonville commons entrance all of that land on the left side like where you go up where the 911 center is and the the headquarters for parks and rec is up there do you own do they the do you the city own land more land up there that you could put a station there the city owns from western boulevard along gateway north the road that goes in right, right across from the the end of the uh, western parkway mm -hmm. um we own up to Commons Drive North, mm -hmm. and then around Commons Drive North, all the way up to the water tank. Gotcha. Um, however, <laughs> if you go north on Western Boulevard, uh -huh. which sounds funny, but if you go yeah. north on Western Boulevard, right. um, the McCray family actually owns um, a fairly large portion. It's right where the creek comes under, all the way up to Long. Longhorn Steakhouse. We're almost to Longhorn Steakhouse. Is that this? Um, so we don't own everything from Gateway North up to where the development at Longhorn is. There is another property owner in between. Oh, okay. Because you had said that you wanted to make sure that you had land there to do that. Yes. Would you yeah. have land on that Gateway North part? Uh, okay. Uh, where, it, free, where the freeway is coming through and it's supposed to go through the commons and all, is that part would, of the city property also? Yes. Yeah. We... Uh, Unless I'm, we own this. See that parcel yes. right there, mm -hmm. and we own this. That's correct. We own about so up to the creek. Right now, we're looking. You see the little circle. We're mm -hmm. trying to at least plan that lift station as close to this. This is actually a creek right here. Right. Trying to get it as close to that as we can, and as out of sight as we can, so that we don't take up any developable land mm -hmm. any more than we have to right and so that's why we're we're you know even though design hadn't started we're sort of uh, playing with that right now 
and that way we can plan for the extension of the bypass also because that's what so i'm wondering because we don't there's so much that belongs to the city that is on that side my other question though is you're talking about that's near a creek and we were just talking about the other station that it's a problem that it's near a creek unfortunately um most of the stations you'll find will I, be near creeks, near creeks and that's because that's the lowest ground and that's the typically where you set the lift station yep. so um the the with the one i mentioned um, the opportunity is that with a fairly short run of gravity sewer, you can completely eliminate a station mm -hmm. that eliminates your operation and maintenance cost of that station. But really what impacts us there is if the pumps lose prime, it takes them time to prime. Um, somebody has to physically go out there and prime them. So that combined with a short storage time is unfortunately a, yeah, you know, recipe. Yeah. Yes. recipe for disaster there. <laughs> it yep. is. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the reasons. And it's such an old station. Yeah, that is an old one. Yeah. So y with a newer one, the design would be better. The creek wouldn't be as we, much of a problem. You're that's hoping? right. We would use submersible state, submersible pumps. Okay. Um, you know, go to our, our standard um, lift station. Design. The better stuff, yes. the newer stuff. Yes. Okay. All right, um, next one is the effluent transfer station. Um, this, I guess you would say, came out of a study that we had uh, done uh, uh, quite some time ago. And at the, at, it's on page 13. It's not shown on the map. And right now, the way uh, we transfer wastewater around uh, this facility is there is a basically a structure right there. And we send wastewater through back and forth through the same line to that structure. And then we send it, we could, wastewater comes into that from these where you see the little uh, aerators, the little white spots, that's our first part of the treatment at the LTS. And then from there, it goes to that little square. And from that square, we either send it this way or we send it this way, one or the other. And then if we send it this way, we have to send it back this way to get it over here to the West Lagoon so we can spray it in the irrigation fields. Well, as you can see, that's a, that, that can present a, a bit of inefficiency and a few challenges. So one of the things that, that came out of a study that we had done uh, a, a while back is that, um, you know, you, can, you should increase your flexibility out here. And so what we are envisioning is a project that, how do I clear this? Uh, uh, Maybe on the other side. That's where I messed you up the last time. I'm not sure. Maybe Alan could help us. Can you clear that, Alan? Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. So now, you know, let's say... Um, Why don't you tell them where we send our effluent out? Right here. All of it. Yeah. Everything has to leave the West Everything again. has to leave from there. So, you know, these two are connected. This south is not connected to the east. So we envision a project where we can shift wastewater between these two, but also where in, instead of having to send everything over to the red arrow I've drawn from the west lagoon, we can actually spray from this lagoon too. And so uh, that is a project that uh, um, has been previously uh, introduced right now. Uh, we've got the design slated for 2020 and uh, construction of uh, that related infrastructure in 2021. Uh, cost from last year that we have is essentially the same. I think we've increased it a little bit uh, uh, for inflation, but uh, not much else has changed. This is a... Uh, uh, the next one is Ellis Outfall G1, and this is a, was uh, an area, it's on page, uh, it's not on map, but it's on page 14 of your CIP. And 
What you see there circled in blue, or highlighted in blue, surrounded by blue clouds, was first identified through uh, SOAR modeling as two th in 2006 as a problem area. Uh, it was again identified in 2011 as uh, when we did an update of that plan as a problem area. Um, and what we did was, you know, that's the model. You know, we got utilities maintenance involved, and utilities maintenance says, yeah, it's been our experience that this can be a problem area. We have in the past had some overflows along this run, and, you know, if we have a heavy rain, we at least have uh, wastewater uh, surcharging into the manholes. So what we're thinking uh, that will take care of this uh, problem is to replace the existing um, 18 inch sewer that you see there with 24 inch and all this is of course immediately upstream of the Bryn Mawr pump station um, It is not a chronic problem that you know every time it rains we have overflows but sewers do get full um, so Where this project is landing right now is uh, in 2022. It's something that we feel like we should address uh, but it's not something that uh, I would characterize as an emergency situation. I have a question on your naming system. Since that's over in Bryn Mawr, how did it end up getting named Ellis Outfall? Ellis, uh, this is a naming convention that was part of the first uh, wastewater collection system master plan. The reason it's uh, called that is because it eventually deranged to the Ellis pump station. And Ellis was identified as one of the major pump station basins. So that's how I got named that way. We can certainly change. I, I understand your point. Because I have, I, I have to think about there, it. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> I actually, you know, when I was refreshing my memory on this, I actually had to go through the same thought process you did. <laughs> and the G1 is, it was gravity, and it was the first gravity project identified in Ellis. In Ellis. Yeah. And I don't remember, there may have been... Uh, five of them so there may be a g1 a g2 a g3 a g4 or g5 yeah and then if there was a force main there was throughout the city there were several force mains identified that would have said f1 so yeah i remember this happening <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and this is one where we rely on our experience to tell us that we need to watch it and at some point we're probably going to need to address it. but it's not an emergency that we have to address next year yeah they're not like any so kind of So where is this in the CIP? Script. This is in 20, right at the end, 21, 22, I 22. think. Is, so we're discussing it now because it's being it's delayed? It's within the five-year window, and it's being delayed a little bit. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, it got moved by a year from last year. Similarly, another Ellis outfall, this time at the Ellis pump station. <laughs> there you go. In G2, so it's the second yeah. gravity one identified. It's not on your map, but it's on page 15 of your CIP handout. And again, um, what the model has been telling us is that the, uh, uh, the sewers get um, full, and the manholes, the sewer during heavy rainfalls, uh, almost reached the top. And utilities maintenance says, yes, that's what we experience. Utilities maintenance also says, we've not really had a problem with overflows here, but you know, it's come close. So uh, this is another project to uh, upsize the gravity sewer. And in this case, it would be upsized from, I think, uh, the, we have a 21 inch line that would be upsized to 24 and a 15 that would be upsized to an 18. Uh, this project was previously in uh, 2021, and we've moved it out to 2022. And part of our reasoning there is back in 2000, and I think it was in 2008, we actually did a project along that 15-inch line that Greg mentioned, this one. Um, we went in and raised every manhole four feet and vented them and put... Uh, watertight manhole lids on them because anybody that's been in the area very long knows that Hardison Hills floods very quickly. Um, and since we've done that, we have not had the problems we were having previously. Basically what we did is build a little bit of capacity into our system by doing that. Mm -hmm. There's not much, to, there's no development pressure there either. It's pretty developed. Yeah, pretty it's developed pretty developed. But right. what I will say is everything, um, 
Well, a large portion of the uh, western below, don't hold me to the exact area, uh -huh. but western below Memorial comes this way. Maybe a little bit below Memorial, maybe Ray. But awesome. it, gotcha. it comes, all of that comes this direction. Okay. So, you know, if something were to redevelop or you change over, you know, retail to a restaurant or something, you could have pressure here. Is that the, um, does the hospital but, run that? Uh, the hus I don't think the hospital, I'd have to check. I don't know if the hospital goes to this one or not. I don't know if it goes through this. It may go through that 21. I'm not sure. Because I think that comes down along the Rouse the Trails project. So you don't think the hospital is part of the pressure? No, I don't. Because the memorial, like Diana just said, memorial's the loop right above the hospital. Yeah. Yes. There's a memorial lift station, but the hospital does not go to the memorial lift station. So I'm not 100% sure. It may come through that 21. I'll just have to check. But we can do that. Well, speaking of Hardison Hills, uh, <laughs> this is also related to the Ellis Lift Station. Uh, this is a project that's been uh, in the uh, CIP. It's on page uh, 16, and it's number five on the overall map. And this is a project where uh, what we want to do is make sure we have access to that lift station during uh, flooding conditions. It's, um, you know, Hardison Hills uh, does flood uh, rather quickly, and that, that station, uh, more often than not, during heavy weather, gets surrounded by water. So what we were uh, thinking uh, of doing here is um, an elevated boardwalk to the station, uh, some other site improvements to, uh, to afford us access during those uh, conditions. Right now, that project is scheduled. Uh, uh, we put it in to begin design in FY18. Um, our challenges for this project are that this is a regulated stream and we will have to do a, a submittal to, uh, um, I guess, the state to... Damn to show, well, no, to uh, uh, the floodplain management group to show that if we put that boardwalk in, uh, we're not going to cause the flooding to get any worse. So, so that will be our biggest challenge. And we actually, when it does get surrounded by water, we have a little boat that we use to, a little aluminum boat that we've used to access it, and it's disappeared a time or two. It's what, been reappropriated by citizens or something. What are those flood <laughs> level events that are highlighted? In, in 25 uh, the, years, uh, the, green, years? the green is the river and ditches flowing with water. The red is the flood way. Um, and the yellow is the, uh, the flood plain. So the red is the 100-year uh, flood. And uh, the, uh, the yellow is uh, the flood plain. It's, yes. The five hundred. The, the yellow. The yellow is the five. Is the, uh, the red is the five hundred. The yellow is the hundred year flood. Um, I think you went that yeah, the, but, yeah. I think so. No. Yeah. Usually, the bigger the, the, green, level, the wider it is. Yeah, the, the green. The area. Of, the green is the. Is the uh, let me look. I mean, five hundred year. Yeah. yeah. If you think it that way, yeah, the green would be the five hundred. The yellow would be the one hundred. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I think like that's that. right. Yeah. And no, the red's actually the floodway, the, the channel, the stream. Yeah, the, the, there's the little green, what the green line I was talking oh, about I was this. see that green. Yeah, that little green line's the stream, and the red is the floodway. Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay. That makes sense. Branchwood subdivision, uh, number six on the map, page 17 on your CIP. And uh, this is a project that was referred to engineering, uh, uh, I guess, from utilities maintenance, uh, based upon their experience uh, to uh, um, is um, to that they they have concerns about the sewer lines within the subdivision. 
So what we envision doing is what we always do is actually go out and do a more detailed look at uh, these sewers to hone in what this project is actually going to entail. Right now, the design for this project is scheduled for FY19. That's what we're suggesting and construction in FY20. The, uh, our estimate uh, from last year has decreased uh, roughly $320,000 because we used, again, more recent uh, bid prices to help us formulate our estimate. Again, that uh, our, our budget assumes um, um, lining of the majority of these sewers as opposed to outright placement. And it's truss pipe, that's why. Yeah. Then there's the Sanders School and Thompson Water and Sewer Rehab. Again, another project that was referred to us by utilities maintenance because of perceived problems. Um, and with this, we're anticipating beginning design this fiscal year, which will... Page in, 20. It's on page 20, yes. It's number 7 on your map. Page 20 and number 7 on your map. And... Um, this year, we anticipate starting design on this with, of course, uh, uh, investigation of the infrastructures that's there to help us uh, refine the project. Um, the project uh, cost that we have in this year's CIP is uh, about $20,000 more than what we showed last year. Do you want to talk about this one? Sure. Uh, this project is an extension of water and sewer lines over into the Woodlands Park, which is um, also known as the Jazz of Soccer Fields. Page 23. And it's on page 23. Thank Number you. Number 18 on the map. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much and, easier for us. Um, this is part of an agreement with the lease uh, for Jazz to use the fields. Mm -hmm. Um, as part of their agreement, they have to build a new building and some concession, I think, which includes offices and maybe some concession facilities and bathrooms, um, which are the uh, most critical part, if you ask my wife and young kids. Um, <laughs> so uh, as part of the agreement, the city is going to extend water and sewer lines. So this is um, a project that reflects um, that extension. and. I could see the question coming, why are we going from uh, what is the um, cul-de-sac over at Dover on the right-hand side instead of going out to Northwoods, which would be a little shorter run. And that is because of the creek that is between the soccer fields and the school. It, we've directional drilled that once before when we did our concentrate line, and it's very expensive. So it's just easier to go straight over to Dover is actually the shortest run and there's sufficient capacity. Right now, our, uh, what we're uh, suggesting uh, is uh, designed to begin in FY18, possibly doing construction towards the end of FY18, uh, but of course that uh, is dependent upon JAZA actually um, going forward uh, with the project to construct the uh, restrooms and classrooms. Uh, I guess we have to see that they have accrued sufficient money to uh, go forward with that building before we will go forward with a project to extend the services to it. So uh, from last year, the cost is about the same. I think we increased it ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 just uh, um, based upon um, probably inflation. West Bayshore, uh, number nine on the map, and page 24 in uh, your CIP handout. Um, this is yet another project where it was referred to engineering by utilities um, because of perceived uh, issues with the water and sewer there. Our um, estimate for this project um, right now reflects a full replacement, um, uh, but of course we will, as this project gets closer, we will do our typical investigatory work and see if there's, you know, some other things that we can do such as lining or point repairs as opposed to complete outright placement. 
Um, right now, project design is uh, scheduled or being suggested for FY21 with construction anticipated based upon that about uh, FY22. Wally, why is that being uh, wait until 2021 for the engineering design if it's got problems and it is one of the older sections of uh, floor and sewer that we have in the system? Uh, I don't know what the exact problems are, so, um, you know, the, the generic answer I can give you is based on our conversations with utility maintenance and what we've seen in the past with overflows and um, it's an area of concern, but it's not our most critical that we need to address right now. You're fairly um, confident it's not going to blow up on us. That's right. Didn't they just do a bunch of work down at Gene Circle and all that long We ago? did replace all along Gene Circle. Um, and uh, Park, you can see Park Stratford. and Stratford. Yeah. We went all along Park and Stratford. And um, that's the project that I mentioned a few moments ago where it was well over a million dollars and we significantly reduced the budget. Mm -hmm. Because what we found is other than certain areas, the sewer was in actually pretty good shape. And what we were finding is that um, the areas where we were having problems, it was, you know, allowing groundwater into the system. So we were able to come through with the I and I project and we uh, did a whole lot of lining along that section. So this could be one of those as we get closer and we evaluate that it's also a candidate because um, while I'm not 100% sure, I would um, be willing to guess that it's probably the same site type of material that we found along Park and Stratford. Wood and clay pipe. Clay pipe, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't have any wood. <laughs> Others do, but we don't. How did they manage to do both sides of it and not do it? Is it just the way the project was cut up because of they, cost? Can you go back? Yeah. Uh, are you talking about... Well, you did Gene and you did Stratford and it's right in the middle. They were done in separate years. Oh, okay. They were done in separate years. All right. Um, and Gene was actually driven by um, the street project. It was one of the worst streets in the area. Um, so that, while the water and sewer um, needed repair, it was largely driven by the paving, paving okay. project. We would have done it if they hadn't had the... We probably would have waited longer. Okay. Black Creek Raw Water Wells. This is on not on your map. It's on page 28 of your CIP. Sure. This um, this stems from the work with the Onzo Water Resources Group, um, which um, just as a reminder uh, includes the city, the base, and Onwasa. Um, this is in part of our. You know, we've updated you several times on our work to. Um, not have to face the next reduction and withdrawal from the Black Creek. Um, as part of that, we have installed some monitoring wells out at Burton Park um, so that we can meet the, try to meet the state's criteria for not um, having to meet the next withdrawal. But one of the things that in working with um, ground, Groundwater Management Associates, which is Dr. Sproul from ECU, um, in working with him, he said, you know, one of the things that you're going to need to consider is all of your wells, or not all, but you have a lot of wells, wells one through five, located on Wells Road, all right in a line. We may need to be prepared to move some of those wells around so that you're not putting a lot of pressure all in one area on the aquifer. Um, so this is this project stems from that um, study. We're not finished yet. We don't know yet whether um, the the, the uh, monitoring wells are constructed. We're we're going through testing now. Um, we have a some additional work to do before the state signs off on them and says. Yes, we can monitor those, and then we will have to monitor them for a year to see what the ground, uh, what the Black Creek is actually doing. Um, so this uh, the this project you'll see has some money in it. We haven't spent the money yet, um, but it would be associated with a study as to where we may need to move those wells. 
um, if we need to move them. And um, one of the things I'll remind the board is we actually have two wells there that have completely failed. We are not using them. It's wells, uh, it's wells um, one and three, I believe. One and five. One and five. Thank you. One and five. And um, we recognize that we either need to rebuild those two wells or we need to do something else. And that's where Dr. Sproul's recommendations came in that instead of rebuild them, you may want to consider relocating them. And unfortunately, if we relocate them, we also have to run new pipes to them. Question on well six. It says that uh, there's possible chloride concerns possibly related to this well having been incorrectly constructed into the underlying aquifer below Flat Creek. So how are you figuring out whether what the cause of the chlorides are? Uh, Dr. Sproul is working on that. He's working Where on that Where is one. the well? Uh, well six is Joe help me out. It's past Wells Road up on the left. Uh, there you uh, go. Eastern Outfitters. It's, there's a, there's a little row with a new little housing development back there. It's right kind of kitty corner behind the uh, uh, Family Dollar or Dollar General and the uh, Andy Mark. It's right there behind the, the uh, Dollar General. And the reason, and the reason Dr. Sproul thinks it could be. A, an improper or a, a construction problem is because there was um, apparently this well was constructed when several of the state had monitoring wells constructed all by the same contractor if I understood it correctly and those wells had some problems so he's thinking that um, and it, it's it's really funny what we're seeing is if the well sits then the chloride concentrations creep up a little bit but as soon as we start using it they disappear whereas uh, and that's where Dr. Sproul thinks it may be improperly constructed so that when it's sitting you know if there's some seepage there from a saltier zone in, or a, an aquifer below it then as soon as you start using it it's pulling the Black Creek water in which is not salty so you're not registering any chlorides. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what leads him to the conclusion that it could be a, a, a related to a construction problem because mm. I think it, if the wells run as soon as what 20 minutes and it completely disappears. It's about 20 minutes. It, it drops right to where our other wells are. So that's that's what leads them to but when it sits for a period of time it gets a higher chloride concentration. Just a question. It says the final reduction is scheduled for 2018. That's it, correct. Is there time to do all this August of that? Two, the way that we've got it timed, August of 2018 is when we would be faced with the next reduction. Mm -hmm. um, so our plan is to uh, begin monitoring. Um, Joe, do you remember if Deanna gave a date? I don't remember what the last date was, um, but shortly after the beginning of the year, 12 months still gives us time to address the state's concerns. Okay. Um, and it actually gives us a little bit of extra time. And the state has been very involved with us. They actually sit in as part of the water resources group. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been very involved in selecting the monitoring, monitoring well locations, the depth we drilled to, um, how we constructed them. Um, and even uh, made some recommendations about some of the um, uh, monitoring units that we'll use. So they've been very, they've been partners and, and, and they really like what the city and Omwasa and the base are doing in, in collaborating together. Um, and they've actually used us to try to um, incentivize others to do that. The regional approach, the regional where you all approach, are working together. Yes. Okay. Didn't you tell us a while back ago that that aquifer is replenishing itself faster than they had thought it would? Um, yes, um, but there's varying theories onto why that is. Mm -hmm. um, some believe that it may be because everybody got out all at once, uh -huh. so now it's recovering faster because people just got out all at once, whereas if everybody were to use what they're permitted for, then you could see problems again. So that's where it comes down to what the state's told us is, if you can monitor um, the aquifer, 
and you can show that you're using it sustainably, they're willing to work with us. They actually verbally told us that if we can show that it's sustainable um, above the, I think we're permitted for two MGD right now, um, so on average two million gallons per day, if we can show it's sustainable at two, we can stay at two. If we can show it's sustainable at two and a half, they're willing to allow us additional capacity. So, but it comes to back to using it in a sustainable manner. Oh yeah. Which we agree with. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, and well house upgrades. Um, this is on uh, page uh, 29 of your book, and I don't think it's on the map. And um, what we intend to do is to establish a, a reoccurring project to address upgrades at several of our wells. Um, I don't know that what you see on page 29 <coughs> actually shows a re reoccurring funding. Uh, what it shows is an initial project where we want to attack uh, well houses, uh, uh, I don't know, two and four. Two and, four. and um, you know, that involves the various things that are described here, such as the roofs, uh, the HVAC system, uh, and structural concerns, leak leaks, so on and so forth. So as you see there, we're actually suggesting that we uh, start to uh, uh, um, quantifying exactly what those things are and designing for them in uh, this coming fiscal year with plans to go towards construction in 19. Many of these well houses, many of the Black Creek well houses were built in the 60s and they've had little if anything done to the structures. Um, and matter of fact, some of the um, <laughs> some of the equipment may date back that far too. <laughs> What's the mold and mildew problem? It's wet. It, it's yeah. just all there's that no, bad. Yeah. Just not good ventilation. Yes. Right. There, are, there are no, there is no heating or air conditioner or anything. It's a small brick building with the heat in the summer and the condensation off the plane. Oh yeah. Pumps run and it gets 180 degrees in there. There's mold. Sounds like my home. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, only a few more. Yeah. Page 31. What is Number 14. Number 14. Number 14. Mm -hmm. FY18. Mm -hmm. You can use mine. Oh, you should. So you've already uh, figured out it's on page 31, number 14 <laughs> on the map. <laughs> Uh, and it basically involves replacing a number of two-inch galvanized lines on these various streets that you see here. Again, galvanized lines, uh, after quite some time, typically become problematic and are um, uh, in need of replacement. Most of these lines are on the uh, back of the curb and not in the street. Uh, from last year's uh, uh, CIP, we've not changed the project budget or schedule. Uh, another project, uh, I guess we were planning to bid uh, jointly if we do it, is uh, to replace water lines in Memorial, Memorial Court, and along Commerce Road. Again, this is a project that has uh, been brought to us to uh, take a look at because of uh, uh, concerns. And when we do that, if um, we validate those concerns, what we think we might be doing, you know, particularly on commerce, is upsizing the six and eight inch lines there uh, to possibly a 12 inch to help with pressure and flow in the area. Uh, I, that's what the, I think the CIP talks about. What I will tell you is early modeling of that says that upsizing those to 12 inches really doesn't do a whole lot for us. So um, again, we will work into the details of that. Uh, um, um, when we, you know, uh, when it comes up for design, uh, right now, um, it is scheduled for, well, it's scheduled for this year, actually, 2018. So, uh, we will start looking at this harder. In terms we're going to move that out. Though. Yeah. 
I think this is one we were moving out. Yeah, I think you're right. Based upon the modeling that we just did early on, um, or a few weeks ago. Yeah, we moved it to 2020. 2020. 2020, okay. You're saying Basically. you suspected a problem, but the modeling has not proved it to be. Well, not only that, uh, Pete says that it's thin wall PVC, which is um, known to have brittle issues. Um, and while they've made some repairs along Kermish Drive, uh, they haven't made any in the recent history. And, and same with, and when I say recent, in the last 12 to 24 months, we really haven't had any major problems along Commerce Drive. However, the thin wall. You're concerned, does but the modeling and the maintenance the, experience does improve the immediate need. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, Castlehane Water Wells. Uh, this is a project that is on page 33 of your CIP handout, not on the map. Uh, and it is a project that we've moved out to 2022 uh, with no change in costs. And um, what we envision there is adding additional Castlehane water wells to our inventory. So to give us more flexibility when it comes to pro providing water uh, to our water treatment plant and then on to our customers. It uh, it allow us to um, rotate between wells and um, um, also to uh, improve spacing between well sites. Again, it's been moved to 2022 with no change in cost. And I guess we're sort of uh, waiting a little bit to see what the results of this uh, uh, monitoring that we're doing of the Black Creek is and what the state's ruling as to whether we have to take that last reduction or not uh, comes along. And part of this is we've moved it out also because of um, the Water Resources Group approach to um, looking at it as a, on a more regional approach. It may be that we don't have to construct Castle Hain Wells. It may be that we can partner with Omwasa or the base or um, and move water, move raw water around um, from areas where it's sustainable to areas where it's needed. So it may be that over time this project morphs into something else. Did you have a number of wells in mind? It just says wells. No, we didn't. Um, at four million dollars, depending on how far out from our system they are, mm -hmm. um, that's probably three wells, maybe four. Um, you know, the, it, a large part is the challenge is the further you get them out, the better for the aquifer right. and the more sustainable it is and the more it costs because the further you got to run pipes. Yeah. Million dollars a well. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, Sandy and Lakewood uh, Drive Water Project. It's number 16 on the map, page 34 in your CIP handout. And again, this is a, another project that's been uh, brought to us um, because of uh, uh, potential concerns of, about the, uh, the age, the integrity of the pipe. Uh, I guess there have been uh, some repairs uh, along those roads. Um, and um, right now, we uh, have that scheduled for design in FY22 construction in FY23, the estimate that we have in the uh, CIP right now is based upon complete uh, replacement of all the water lines. Again, we will do an evaluation as the time uh, <coughs> draws closer to actually deal with this project and have a better estimate of it. Um, and with that, we're at the end of the projects you've seen in the past. Again, what we will do is bring new projects to you in January to uh, discuss. And, you know, that's all part of the CIP uh, process. What we will be doing is continuing to uh, uh, refine the scope of the projects and the CIP. We'll be working internally to try to uh, match uh, funding with uh, with needs and that of course involves meetings with management and we will uh, 
that all that will end up resulting in a, a draft CIP presented to council and then council uh, will adopt the CIP with adoption of their budget and of course during that uh, process we will come to you for your support uh, of the project and uh, um, you know again that uh, we'll be back with you in January. Greg, thank you very much, and I know you were pinch hitting too. And <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you very much. Well, I, you know, I, I, I um, I'm not like I when I first got here is down in the weeds on every project like I once was. That's because I have uh, a capable staff, particularly when it comes to Vienna. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I tend to be involved with are more of the larger projects that you see here and other technical things as well as administration. So uh, um, I, I know a little bit about all the projects. I'm just not down there in the weeds. <laughs> so, but I appreciate you bearing with us. And uh, uh, I know it's been a long evening, but uh, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free. We'll probably be back with you next month with new projects, proposed projects. And then if we follow what we did last year, which you seem to like pretty well, We'll probably be back to you in February again for either additional questions or possibly your support to carry forward as a recommendation. Um, but that would give us February and March in case we needed more time. So we still have plenty of time for you to review, ask questions, those kind of things. All right. Is there any other business? Any back? I have a couple of other things, just okay. announcements. Go ahead. All right, so um, let me find my notes. On January 3rd, hopefully you've received an invite already, but um, there will be, I'm, I'm taking it no. You will be receiving an invite. On January 3rd, there will be a, a joint uh, boards and commission meeting with city council. Um, that is one of their regular scheduled workshops, I believe. Um, so... Uh, that we do that annually where you meet with city council and um, you know a couple of different years we've done different things we did a design uh, a little charrette one year and updates one year so more information to come on what the format will be so that'll be on January 3rd um, Pete asked me he he apologizes for not being here he had a death in the family so he, um, he had other things that he had to attend to but um, he is planning to have his Christmas party on December 21st at noon. You are all invited, so we hope that you can make it. He, um, he has several people in his crew that cook and cook very well. So I've um, seen Mr. Dorn a few times and Mr. <laughs> Thomas a few times. So um, we hope you're able to attend, but that will be at noon on the 21st. At the, com at the complex? At his, at his office, yes, at the complex. Thank About you. Noon time. About noon. Yeah. And then um, one thing, it was in your, um, it was in your uh, report, but there was one grease-related spill this past month. Um, it was at a restaurant, and basically what happened, one of the outlet pipes got clogged, and um, it was a very small spill under 100 gallons. Um, they called us. We were able to get there and help them out very quickly. It was a newer restaurant. It's unfortunately one of those things that just happened, um, but they've been they've met their pumping schedule and everything. It just somehow grease got in one of their uh, in their discharge line and clogged, and there was a small spill. So I wanted to highlight that out of your report and that's all I have okay this this? That's it. okay meeting adjourned you need a motion oh we need a motion <laughs> go ahead guys my motion we adjourn there you go second, second. there you go <laughs> meetings adjourned guys all in favor <laughs>